Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to you about this week's Parsha. And this week's Parsha is Parsha's Chaye Sora. Interestingly, I just want to mention something that uh, Rabbi Sachs said, and uh, sadly, this week, Parsha's Chaye Sora is the week when we are unfortunately enduring the passing of Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, Zichrona Levrocha. And for those of you who have not yet heard my Hesped, please look at the comments on this video and you'll be able to see the Hesped. I would very much like you to see the Hesped. I think it's important because I spoke about Rabbi Sachs the man, Rabbi Sachs the mensch, a different aspect of his personality than perhaps is covered in the obituaries and the many other Hespadium and eulogies that have been given. I want to dedicate this year to Rabbi Sachs, his uh, incredible scholarship and uh, what it has meant to me, how much he has taught me in everything that he's done has been uh, uh, very, very important in my growth as a rabbi, and I'm extremely, um, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to him for everything that he did for me, and for everything that he not just did for me, but for all those that I've taught over the years, because I know I've learned so much from him. So I want to dedicate this share to his memory, and uh, hopefully we can say a prayer for him, we can recite a psalm for him, and we can remember him, the great man that he was, and everything that he contributed to the Jewish world in terms of learning and advocacy, and as a great ambassador of the Jewish people, for the Jewish people, um, among the Jewish people, and even among the Gentile world. So, uh, Rabbi Sachs, your memory lives on. We're going to focus today, Parshas Chayesara, on a piece of Nesivas Sholem. You know that one of my favorite Sforim, one of my fam favorite commentaries on the Parsha is Nesivas Sholem. And it's, uh, it's an amazing commentary by the Slonim Rebbe. We're going to look at the piece right at the beginning of the parsha, you know, it's, it is ironic. And this Rabbi Sachs points out in his commentary, and you can read it on his website, rabbisachs.org. He comments that, in fact, it's a curiosity that the parsha is called Chaye Sora, the life of Sora, but actually talks about a death. Only the first, the very first verse of the parsha talks about her life. <laughs> And it talks about her 127 years, which we're going to be discussing today. But actually, it talks about her death because it says that she died and talks about her burial and the negotiation by Abraham, Abraham Avinu, her husband, to obtain her burial spot. So why is it called Chaye Sarah? It should be called Mot Sarah, right? Because it's it, it 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 is the description, the definition of her, of her death scene, and Rabbi Sachs says, beautiful. It's just one little piece in his essay on this week's parsha. He says, your life is not measured just by what you achieve during the years in which you are alive. It is measured by the impact you have beyond your lifetime. Incredible idea. Can you imagine that? We living and we think of ourselves, we live however long, however many years we live. We live 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, however many years we live. And we think that once our life is over, our life is over. No, it's not. Your life lives on through the legacy that you leave behind. And Sarah Imenu, Sarah, our foremother, our matriarch, she left a legacy that lasts 4,000 years. Because here we are, 4,000 years later, we're still talking about Sarah Imenu. It's incredible. So, Vayu Chaye Sarah. It is the life of Sarah. Even though she died, she still lives. She lives on in you and in me. Because whenever we do the things that she felt were important, that were part of her legacy as a Jewish matriarch, her life lives on. And just because you have a limited lifespan as a physical human being in this world doesn't mean that your life ends 
when you breathe your last breath. And that is the message that Rabbi Sachs conveys in his essay on Parshat Chaye Sarah, I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I think it really dovetails in what we're going to be talking about today in this beautiful Nativot Shalom, the Nesivas Shalom that we're going to be learning from the Shlon of Rebbe. And the Nesivas Shalom focuses on the Rashi at the beginning of the Parsha. Rashi, as you know, is a commentary that really tries to deal with some of the basic uh, underlying concepts without which we cannot understand the parsha, the basic meaning of the text of the Torah. And this is what he has to say about the beginning of Parshat Chaye Sarah. The beginning of the parsha, we say that the years of the life of Sarah were 127. Over Rashi says the Nasiva Shalom. What does Rashi say about this interesting pasuk which recalls the lifespan of Sarah Imenu, of our matriarch Sarah? Shnei Chaye Sarah, Kulan Shavin Latova. They were all equal for the good. How do, how do we, I'm not going to go into the details of it. Rashi says the fact is that when she was uh, 20, she was like when she was 7. When she was uh, 100, she was like when she was 20. And that's why the pasuk is phrased in the way that it was phrased. But the most important message, the most important takeaway of the pasuk, the very first pasuk of Parshat Chaye Sarah, is Kulan Shavin Latova. Every and one of her years was equal in its goodness. She was somebody who was an equal opportunity, good person. And therefore, uh, that is the way the end of her life is conveyed in the Parsha in the Torah. Over Sefer Irin Kaddishin. Irin Kaddishin is a Sefer from the, the Rebbe of Ruzhin, the Ruzhin Rebbe. Ruzhin eventually became Sadiger, and uh, the Ruzhin Rebbe wrote an amazing Perish, he didn't actually write it, it was written um, for him, um, but he uh, conveyed very, very important concepts about the Parsha in the Sefer Irin Kaddishin. And he said as follows Hiksha al Oimra the Yushahu Milosha and Vayihu. It says Vayihu, Vayihu Chaye Sara. The word Vayihu is very similar to the word Vayahi says the Rebbe of Rijin. And we know that the word Vayihi, Vayihi, um, Chazal tell us that it is a Loshoin of Tsar. It is a language that conveys pain and suffering. That is the word Vayihi. Whenever we see any passage in the Torah, or in Tanakh, in fact, beginning with the word Vayihi, there is pain. And the question is, how can you have the word Vayihu, Vayihi, at the beginning of something which is Kulan Shavin Latova? Vaharei Kulan Hayu Shavin Latova, says the Rabbi Brijin. The Rebbe Brijin, the original Rebbe, he was, uh, you know, in the Hasidic world, we call him the Heilige Rijina, the Holy Rijina Rebbe. He said, if they were all Shavin Latova, they were all exactly the same in terms of their goodness. Ma Inyan Sa'ar Lekan. How can we, in fact, conceive of this idea of pain, of suffering, of anything bad when Sarah died, if Kulan Shavin Latova? Ubichlal says the Nasida Sholem, and in general, just let's look at this from a broad perspective. Tzarech biur ha de kulam shavin letova. Let's understand what does it mean that they were all equal in their goodness. Harei kol chayash al sarah hayum leim tsar biyusurim veich zek kulam shavin letova. If we look at the life of Sarah. The fact is, she led a very difficult life. She didn't lead an easy life. She suffered. She never had children. She had to uh, uproot herself from the place where she was born and go to a totally different place. How can we ever say 
that her life was good, her life was tov. How, we, how can we ever um, convince ourselves that just because it's said in Chazal that it makes any sense? And if we're going to go to the heart of the matter, why would the Torah even have written a pasuk that would be interpreted as such that would say kulan shavin letova that every single one of them of the years of her life are equal in their goodness. Shalomatsinu kazot ba'od makom shetasaper ha Torah kedosha. We don't find in any other place in the Torah that the Torah writes about somebody who died. Al af echad anybody shekol shnei chayav hayu shavin letova that each and every one of their years, as it were, were equal in their goodness. Why was Sarah chosen as the person, as it were, as the paradigm? of Shavin Latova. Why would she have been chosen to, um, to emulate this particular characteristic of Shavin Latova? And similarly, we can question that which is written later on in our parsha. You know that in Parshat Chaye Sarah, it's not only Sarah who dies, Avraham Avinu, our patriarch Abraham, also dies. And it says, Avraham Zaken Baba Yamim, before he sent his servant Eliezer to look for a wife for Isaac. It says, and Abraham was old and he was getting older. Baba Yamim, and it says there, what is it? What does the Medrash say? Vashem beirachet Abraham bakol, that the um, the pasuk says that God blessed Abraham with everything. Shezu hamadrega gedola beyotesh al bracha. That is the ultimate form of blessing. There is no greater blessing than God blessing you with everything that you need, and Abraham had that blessing. Says the Nesiva Shalom, we don't find this in any other person that is mentioned in the Torah. The Torah talks about many different characters, talks about many different people, and yet in no other situation do we ever see that God blessed them with everything. Everything that they need. So, how do we understand that Sarah and Abraham, Sarah and Abraham, the two most foundational figures of who we are as the Jewish nation, are mentioned in this capacity, are mentioned in this context at the beginning of Parshat Chaye Sarah, that's the question of the Nesiva Sholem, the Yeshloma. And he answers as follows. Ha'inyan, how are we to understand this? We have to, look at, we have to look at it conceptually. We have to understand it conceptually. Tahainu, Ketiv, and it says in the Pasuk, it's something that, said, that is spoken about in Tehillim. Ki amarti olam chesed yibaneh. The world is built, is supported by kindness, chesed, by the things that people do which are kind and which, which help others. The entire world only stands, only survives, can only exist as a result of kindness that is in the world. If that's the case, the entire world can only begin as a result of the fact that Abraham Avinu existed. Why? Because he was the epitome. He was the paradigm of chesed. chesed ki olam chesed Abraham Abinu was the foundation of a monotheistic faith because he understood the importance of chesed 
of kindness. If you want to understand these initial parshiot in the Torah, these initial portions of the Torah in Bereshit, you have to understand this concept as being foundational in what it means to be a Jew. Parshiotav shel Avram Avinu. These are the parshiot, the portions of Abraham, our forefather. Lelam deinu to teach us. Eich shal yedei hachesed shelo itchil binyan olam hatikun. Only through the fact that he understood how important it was to be kind to other people, other human beings on the planet, that was what created the foundation of a faith community that could effect a correction of the physical universe uh, and, and bring it closer to the world of spirituality. Chesed Kale Kol Hayom. Ukum Amar Maran Hakadosh Mikobrin. He says, I want to quote the holy rabbi, the Rebbe of Kobrin. He said as follows Shabakol Yom Be Yom Chuyav Yehudi La Sot Masi Chesed. Every single day, a Jew has to do an act of kindness. Are you Jewish? You, you, you're watching the Shir. You're, you're wondering if I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Are you Jewish? What does it mean to be a Jew? What does it mean to be a Jew? Do you know what the Nesiva Shalom says? Each and every day, have you done an act of kindness? I davened this morning. I went to shul. I made a bracha before I ate an apple. I said, Have you done an act of kindness? Are you a Jew? If you are a Jew, Avram Avinu set a standard for you. It's not good enough just to, f to follow the ritual laws. It's not good enough for you to just daven shachris, mincha, and mariv. It's not good, of you, good enough if you just wear a yarmulke and you wear tzitzis. Did you do an act of kindness today? Have you done something which is kind? Have you said something nice to somebody else and made them feel good about themselves? That's the legacy of Abraham Avinu. That's what it means to be a Jew of faith. That's what it means to be a monotheist, to believe in God. It's not good enough to do the ritual acts if they're not matched by acts of kindness. That's what the Nesiva Shalom says. Listen to what he says. It's so important that you have to do an act of kindness. No, one day should pass that you didn't do an act of kindness. The yom A day in which you didn't do an act of kindness will not be considered a day of your life. Don't waste a day. Don't waste your time. Don't waste a moment. Think to yourself, what can I do today? What can I do right now that is going to make another person in this world a happier and more fulfilled person than they were before I did what I did? You need to be a person who acts kindly towards others. That is the legacy of Abraham Avinu. That is the legacy of Sarai Menu. That is who you are. If their existence has any meaning, it only has meaning if you follow their example. Ukudvarim ha'ilu ita b'shlach kadosh says the Nesiva Shalom and on this basis, the Shlach Kodesh writes, "V'katav od baze al per al ki amarti olam chesedi baner." The pasuk says, 
Olam chesed yibane. The world is built on kindness, on chesed, on kind-heartedness. The chesed elokim kol ayom, and the kindness of God continues all day long. Shashefa elyon nishpali de midat chesed. The ultimate form of spiritual, of godliness, can only come about as a result of kindness. Shali dezeh shehudi osek bechesed. As a result of the fact that a Jew involved himself in kindness and in doing good deeds, helping others, he, as it were, he draws on the chesed of Shamayim. By the way, are you alive today? I, I, I'm talking to you. Are you alive? Did you wake up this morning and you were still breathing? Why are you breathing? Because God has kindness. It's a foundation of kindness. Are you breathing? Then God's kind. Now, what are you going to do with that kindness? Are you going to simply accept it and say, I like the fact that somebody's giving me something, but I'm, I'm not going to give anything back. Or are you going to say, if I got kindness, I'm going to pass it on. I'm going to make kindness my motif as a Jew, as a descendant of Abraham Avinu, as a descendant of Sarah Imenu, only kindness matters. And you're going to make sure that you do something kind for someone else. That is the legacy that they left behind, that we inherited. Uh, by the way, it's quite a responsibility. I, I don't imagine for a moment that it's something easy. But that responsibility is real. I want to be kind because I inherited a legacy of kindness. I want to look after others because I inherited a legacy of looking after others. I want to make sure that other people are better off than they could be if I left them alone because I inherited a legacy of making sure that other people are going to be better off if I don't leave them alone. That is the legacy of Abraham Avinu. That is the legacy of Sarai Menu, and that is what the Nesiva Sholom says. Ulufichach, and therefore, Katav Shebechol Yom Vayom Miyemei Chayav Yirei Yehudi Lasot Chesed Im Chabeiro Begufo O Bimemono O Benafsho. Every single day, any Jew, are you alive and you're Jewish? Make sure that you use your resources to the maximum capacity to ensure that there is chesed in the world. How can you do it? You think to yourself, how can I be kind to other people? Teach other people something that you know it can help them in their lives. Do something, anything. It can be the smallest thing. It's not important. Find something that you can do for someone else that can help them. That's going to make their life better. That's going to improve their existence. That is chesed. You have something that they don't have. You can give it to them. Give it to them. Make sure that they have it. That is what Abraham Avinu did. He didn't just say, oh, wow, I found God. That's my thing. I'm going to keep it to myself. He said, I found God. Now let me share that message with others. Let me be someone who can share the message of a monotheistic faith, of a moral monotheistic faith with a world that is immoral and is pagan. That is your job. It's your job. You're watching this. You're thinking to yourself, how can I do it? I can't answer that individually to each and every person that's watching this share or listening to this share. But I'm telling you that you have something that other people don't have and they need. And you can give it to them. Olam chesed The entire world is built on kindness. The entire world is built on what you can do for others. That's the only reason the world exists. 
It's God's purpose in having created the world. Abraham Avinu discovered it. He was a pioneer. Sarah Emanu was his wife. She was a foundational figure in this concept of chesed. But we carry that legacy. We inherited that. We got to make sure it happens. That's what the Nesiva Sholab is saying. Because we become conduits of chesed from heaven if we become ambassadors of chesed min hashamayim. And from this, the midat chesed is separated, is different from all the other midot, all the other characteristics that we don't find, that we need to engage in them on each and every day. Chesed is something we need to engage in every day, without fail. Wake up in the morning. What can I do today that's chesed? There's many other characteristics that you have in your life. Don't worry about those. You don't need to do those every day. Chesed every day. That's what it says. Kibim shashefa elyon hu bebechinat Hashem tzelcha. You have to understand that this is where godliness, your protection that you want from God, that's where it comes from. Shekashe Yehudi osse chesed, haru mamshich al atzmo chesed min hashamayim. If you want chesed from shamayim, you want to wake up in the morning, you can breathe. Make sure that you are a Baal Chesed, that you are somebody who spreads Chesed in the world. If you don't, who knows what's going to happen? If you do, you become an agent, a messenger, an ambassador of God, and God wants you to exist. We must be his messengers. We must be his representatives. And that's what it means when it says in the Pasuk that kindness of God is all day long. Every single day we need God's kindness. Without it, we cannot exist. It's not possible. And that's why we need to engage in kindness each and every day so that we can tap into that repository of chesed of God. Each and every day. And now we understand when it said in Pasuk that the world is built on Chesed. If you want to begin resolving the problems of the world, begin with kindness. That's how you begin. If you want to solve problems, be kind. If you want to make sure that the world is a better place, be kind. Find reasons to be kind to other people. That is what you need to do. Olam chesed The world is built on kindness. Basically, it doesn't matter if we're talking about generalities. Even in your the most intimate and private moments of your existence and the, and the difficulties that you, uh, that you are experiencing in your personal life. It doesn't matter. Olam chesed yibaneh. The world is built on kindness. If you're not kind, you will have prevented godliness in this world. And that's what all these stories, these narratives about Abraham, our patriarch, that's what they're about. That the Torah 
God, um, the Torah wanted to convey to us the incredible greatness of Abraham Avinu. He, he reflected this aspect of human existence, of kindness. The beginning of Parshat Vayera, that was last week's Parsha, we saw that Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tents, tent, and even though it was in the great heat of the day, and suddenly he looked up and he saw, and there were three people standing there. Do you know what he did? He was a man who epitomized kindness. He saw them, he ran toward them. And as we explained in another place, says the Nitibot Shalom, in each and every word of this particular passage, we can see the greatness of the test that was endured by Abraham. He was sick because he just had his Brit Milah, as we saw the, at the end of Lech Lecha. That's what he was. It was a very, very hot day. It was a chamsin. It was extremely hot. And even more than that, God came to visit him. How can he run away from God? But AFLP. And nevertheless, even though they appeared to him as ordinary, as it were, travelers, Arabs, not people who believed in one God, what did he do? As a result of this, we understand that it is more important to welcome guests to your home than to concern yourselves can you imagine this? With the presence of the Almighty. Because kindness is more important than spiritual awareness. Being a kind human being takes precedence over everything else. Shah Torah Kedusha, the Holy Torah, Mesaperet Beparshat Zu tells us in this passage the greatness of Abraham's kindness. He was willing to give up his own life. He was sick. He could have died. God was with him. He was willing to give everything up simply to perform an act of kindness. Absolutely incredible. And afterwards we see the passage, the narrative in the Bible, in the Torah, about Sodom being destroyed and how Abraham tried to pray that Sodom should not be destroyed. How he was willing to advocate on the behalf of all those who were sinners and the worst types of people that lived in the city of Sodom. That was an act of kindness. That was an Abrahamic act. That's who we should emulate. And now we have at the beginning of Chayi Sarah the story of how Sarah was going to be buried. It conveys to us the importance of dealing with the dead. A very unusual act. It's not an act that is common, for example, in the animal kingdom. We're animals, right? We are mammals. Mammals don't bury their dead. We as human beings take care of our dead. We have a feeling, an emotional feeling, uh, that we feel that even though someone's died, it's not going to make any difference to them whether they're buried or not buried. Who cares? It's organic material. And yet, Avraham Avinu, the epitome of a man of kindness, makes extraordinary efforts to make sure that his wife Sarah is going to be buried in a proper burial plot. That is the story that is recorded in the Torah, and it's so important 
for us to understand that that's the way that we need to be. Says the Nitibot Shalom. The Nitibot Shalom. Shalom says it's so important for us to understand that the burial of Sarah was not a random act. It's an act of example that we need to behave that way. Each and every one of these stories is there to convey to us the importance of acting kindly in every given situation. That's who we are meant to be. That's who we are as descendants, as those who have inherited the legacy of Abraham and the legacy of Sarah. It was only as a result of these two great people that we are able to correct the world. Correcting the world is not because we believe in God. Correcting the world, says the Nesiva Sholem, is because we can perform acts of kindness. He now goes into a long piece about Eliezer, the servant of Abraham Abinu, who was asked by Abraham to go and seek a wife. What was the act? What was the characteristic that he sought in the wife to be of Yitzchak? Kindness. Feed the camels. Make sure that this is a person who acts kindly with others. That is ultimately who we are as a Jewish people. We must be people who act kindly with others. We act charitably in every given situation. And based on everything we have already said, Yesh Lomar, how we are to understand this first pasuk of Parshat Chaye Sarah. Kulam Shavim LeTovah says Rashi, they were all equal in their goodness. Shekshinu Shari Avru Aleo Harbe Maod Slaot V'Yisurim. We said, we asked the question that many bad things happened to our, it happened to Sarah, V'Yishlamah. We have to understand the explanation is that which Chazal teach us. It's in a Bereshit Rabbah, it's in a Midrash. Tzadikim t'chilatani surim besofan shalva. You need to understand. If you are righteous, the initial stages of your righteousness go through terrible tribulations and trials and difficulties, but ultimately there is peace and there is salvation. Pirush. How do we understand that? Initially you go through the challenges and difficulties and hurdles of a person that goes through life. Some of them are increased, but some of them are the basic challenges of life. At the end, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be okay. As a result of all the many challenges that a person has to withstand, if they want to be the best that they can be, it's only going to happen because they went through these challenges and they went through these difficulties. As the Medrash says, God tested Abraham. What does that mean? What does it mean? That all the tests and all anything, all the things that a person who fears God has to go through, who it's only so that that person can grow and be a better person, a better ambassador of God in this physical, material world, so that they can grow. And as a result of everything that a person goes through, 
as a result of all the tests that a person has to endure in life, they're going to become a better person. And that's what it means. At the beginning, difficulties. At the beginning, troubles. At the beginning, I, I can't take it. It's too much for me. However, the Sofan Shalva, at the end, it's all worth it. At the end, it was worth every effort. Why? Because it was only as a result of all the things that you went through that you became the person that you are now. No pain, no gain. If you didn't go through the difficulty, you can't enjoy that which the difficulty has produced. And that's what it says. Everything that you go through in life is only there as a platform for you to grow as a person and to make you better than you were than when you first started. As we find with Abraham after the difficulty, the test. Can you imagine the challenge? Asking to ask to sacrifice your own child. God says to him, I will bless you. You will be blessed that your descendants will be will grow and will proliferate like the stars of the heaven. And like the sand that is on the beach of the sea. And your descendants will beat all their enemies. The only, uh, I guess, platform, possibility, ability of Avram Avinu to achieve all of these objectives was because he'd been through the difficulties of the tests that he had to go through. And similarly, we find with Joseph, the great Joseph, the son of Jacob, who suffered for decades in Egypt as a slave. And even though he was a leader, he was uh, the prime minister of the Pharaoh of Egypt, he still missed his family and he wasn't in his natural setting. And we say about Yosef HaTzadik, It's only because he went through the difficulties that he endured, that he ever achieved the level of Malchut, of kingship, of being part of the royal family, as it were, of the Egyptian nation. Um, that Joseph, the great Joseph, whose being in Egypt was the platform for us to achieve ultimately the exodus, the redemption, and receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai. He could only get where he got because he had suffered. If you suffer, you will gain. No pain, no gain. And now we understand why the Torah says that they were all equal in their goodness these 127 years. Dafka itself Sarah, specifically when we are talking about Sarah. It's only as a result of kindness that kindness will persist, that kindness will continue. Sarah was an equal, an echo. In every way, she was a reflection of Abraham in terms of her kindness. As Chazal says, Abraham ayah megayeret anashim v'sarah megayeret atanashim. The Chazal tell us that Abraham worked with the men and Sarah worked with the women to bring them into monotheism. She asked yachad im Abraham. She worked together with Abraham in all aspects of his kindness and in everything that he did. Be mishala shoel harei kol chayehem ayum leim tsar v'yisurim. And if anybody would ask. But come on, these people went through tremendous difficulties in life. Come on, they didn't have children until they were 90, 100 years old. They went through unbelievable 
difficulties. שכל הייסורים שעברו עליה היו בעצת קל דעות השם להביאה לתכלית שכולן שווים לטובה. says the נשיא בשולם, all the difficulties that she went through, she only went through so that she could be equal in every aspect of her life to the goodness that she delivered that has endured long beyond her lifetime. Sarah, Sarah, our matriarch, Sarah Imenu, only remains as a paradigm of kindness and of virtue because she went through the difficulties that she had to endure during the course of her lifetime. It was only as a result of all the things that she had to endure and go through and suffer that she was able, and they were all equal, was letova for the good, so that she could convey this goodness, not just in her own lifetime, but for her children, her grandchildren, for her descendants, including you and me. We are descendants of Sarah only because she went through the difficulties that she had to endure. All the houses of Israel stand on this foundation. They all stand on the foundation of Sarah's goodness, kindness, and the difficulties that she had to endure. And that's what the Torah wants to teach us. If you are focused, says the Torah, on doing goodness, then the goodness would outlive you and outlast you. It's not going to just be the goodness that you do. That goodness will persist long after you have finished doing the good deed that you are doing right now. Just like Abraham and Sarah, who were involved in every aspect of their lives in, in kindness. And that's exactly what Rashi means when he says about Sarah, that in every aspect of her life, the goodness was equal. It was equal even beyond her lifetime. Her lifetime persisted even after she was gone. That's what it means when it says that Abraham was old and he lived to a very old life. And God blessed Abraham with everything. We can say that, you know, Abraham lived a long life. He was very old. You know why he lived such a long life? Because every single day he did an act of kindness. As a result of that, at the end of his life, we can say that God blessed Abraham with everything. In every aspect, in the completeness of blessing. My friends... If we are looking for heroes, let's look no further than Abraham and Sarah. Let's look at these two incredible people who as exemplars of kindness and of goodness in the world, whose names have persisted long beyond their lifetimes. We don't know exactly how they looked. We don't have pictures of them. We know about their lives only through the narratives in the Torah, but one thing we know about them. They were kind to a fault. Sarah was kind that at 127 years old, we can say about her, there was no kinder person on the planet. And we have inherited that legacy. Abraham, he was Zaken Baba Yamim. He was an old man, but he was kind every day of his life. And we are preserved and we are enlightened and we are enlivened by that legacy, a legacy of kindness. My friends, be kind. Make sure that your lives are kind. Make sure that everything that you do is kind. Make sure that every aspect of your life has, as a backdrop, kindness to make sure that that which you do is going to be a reflection of your ancestors, the ancestors that count, Abraham and Sarah. Thank you.